Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan, and I was excited to see this one come in. It's a Bullet uh, 24 Rear Kitchen Premier Series, which is their upscale series. It weighs just under 5,500 pounds dry weight. It's an insanely good either big SUV tower, like if you got an excursion or something like that, or a, a common tow package half ton should yank this thing around all day long. It's got wide stance stability axles. It's 29 foot tip to tail tongue to bumper. It's got a manageable tongue weight. The hitching is included with it from the previous owners. Uh, it, it, I can't find any major points of concern. And I, I was I, I was excited to see this one because this is one of those floor plans we don't have in our lineup. And even though we don't carry Bullet, I've always had a lot of respect for them. It's a very cool brand. They do a lot of very good things. We carried their sister Passport here for a while. Also a very good brand. And this floor plan was always one of those. Every now and then a customer would call and say, hey, do you have anything in your lineup that's like this one? And we never did. It was always that unicorn. And I always hated selling against it. So it's such a treat for me to actually have one on here on the grounds. Although uh, a good camper like this, lightweight like that, lots of space, lots of storage. I don't expect it to last very long. Two slides, 29 feet, less than 5,500 pounds. Are you kidding me? And this is what I was talking about. It's a, I, I mean, 29 feet for opposing slides. That is shorter, relatively speaking but it's just wide open. You've got windows all over both sides of the RV. You have that big vaulted ceiling with the central air system really just opening everything up. And then like, as you walk through, you start to realize every window opens for airflow. Now, many of these are frameless. Frameless windows do not traditionally get near the uh, airflow of a sliding pane window, but they do, hold on. I just spotted some, what is that? Hold on, I'm sorry. Wait a minute, that has, okay. So that's like something got, st okay, that can be scraped off. I'm like, wait a minute. They use a hardwood table. There's no way that's like a scuff in some kind of contact paper. Sorry, I have a general policy. If I see something, I say something. I, and I haven't really noted any sort of significant defects on this thing. As you can see, it is uh, in pretty good shape, nice and wide open. The storage in this one is, a little unconventional. Actually, let's start right up here and start looking at that storage. This also has a nice trifold sleeper sofa you can see over here. And when that is in play, you can still walk around it. So if you want to get back to that eight cubic foot fridge to those solid surface countertops to get back to everything back here, like to the coffee maker, there's a handy little coffee maker plug back in the corner. You know, it's, it's a very easily accessible floor plan in that way. That's one of the things I really like about this one. But again, I try to be fair. And if this RV has one Achilles heel, it's certainly not the entertainment center. Because when you're sitting here on the sofa, this is your sofa point of view. This is super easy viewing. You saw where that TV can pivot. You can make that TV pivot back toward the kitchen if you're cooking back there. You can make it pivot over here toward the sofa. You could turn it a little bit more toward the dining. Now, this would have originally, I believe, had four fixed chairs. I believe the previous owners swapped those out for this pair of folding type chairs which do look um, keystone spec, but if you notice the wood tones match a little different, these chairs came from a little bit different camper. And I suspect the original chairs rubbed against the wall here a little bit, but that's about the worst blemish I've been able to find in this thing. What I was saying, Achilles heels. This RV just ain't got spit for drawers. It's the only real knock that I have against one. And I don't mind pointing out sometimes I think where RVs fail, uh, along with where they succeed. I think that there's ways around, like you could get a little utensil organizer, but like you got this little stand over here next to the sofa. It feels like that could have been like a little mini bank of drawers and still kind of functioned a little bit as a side stand. That's just, that's my personal take on it. I hope you appreciate the fact that even like as an experienced RVer, I, I'll, I'll try to point some good and some bad out. Now, one thing I do want, oops, the bedroom door's closed behind me. One thing I want to mention to you, we're not going to bother uh, closing this one up, slide closed in road mode, because that slide is going to come right up to this door. It blocks the bathroom. It blocks everything but the, well, the bathroom you can get to from the bedroom if you go through the door, but nothing south of the door on this side of things is accessible when the slide is closed. Now, I'm not sure where these folks camped, but it must have been screaming hot because both uh, in that like combination skylight vent combo above the corner shower over here and in this, uh, the little vent skylight thing above the bed, 
they put those little insulating pillows in there just to kind of keep those things blocked off. Now you see the porcelain foot flush uh, stool right there. Remember, the goal of this RV was to keep as big of a living room as possible and as short of a length possible, which means there's not a lot of like bathroom storage in here, but these are just constructed walls. You could very easily add like a little towel rack or a small little shelf organizer unit or something like that in here. There's also a couple of really interesting things like up here in the bedroom. First of all, this is a 60 by 80 True Queen. That is one of the things that separated a Premier from a Bullet Superlight when this was built. I believe they're all True Queens now uh, in these Superlights and above. But that handy little, uh, handy, I say that every time, God bless it. Handy little laundry hamper. There we go. Um, it gives you a place to put yesterday's clothes and that drops right down into the pass-through. I don't know if you can hear that. I think the ice cream man is uh, on the lot. <gasps> oh my God, he is! Ice cream man! Ice cream man! <laughs> ice cream man! I missed him. I can hear him in the distance. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Whatever. I'll go ahead and close the slides anyway. Because this is what I was saying right here. With that slide closed, you pretty much pinched the camper off. You could get to the bathroom by going in through the bedroom, though. But one of the benefits of a cable-driven slide system is that if you deploy the slide only partially, it, like only 12 inches, if you deploy it only partially, it's okay. Now, it's not that you should be in the slide jumping around, bouncing around, doing a lot, and the other slide is still fully retracted, mind you, but with no island in the way, you can basically make travel stops. Now, it does mean that you need a little bit of room to be able to open that slide out, but logically, that is not even as far out uh, as like if you opened your door on your truck. So if you can open your truck's door, you should be able to deploy the slide about 12 inches, which means you should be able to get back here for a quick travel stop. The thing is, you obviously don't want to leave it like that and uh, you want to leave it that way as little as possible. I also recommend not doing that if you can help it like in a rainy situation, because when you are running things in and out, the slides are mostly sealed, maybe not totally completely sealed. And I, oh, okay. Just discovered a little thing up here where maybe the slide fascia bumped the wall. Obviously not structural, but hey, we found a thing, woohoo. And, and it's one of those things that that full nose cap they put on the premieres uh, it just, it always immediately just sets the tone for the RV. I've, I've said a couple times, it feels, it's got like this stealth fighter jet sort of look to it. It is such a good appearance on this thing. And I mean, when you look in the rear view mirror, man, it makes you feel good looking at that. Now, sometimes when you have a big slide on the door side like this, your awning space gets robbed a little bit. So I wanted to take some time to actually open the awning up here to sort of show you how much space that you have left. I personally feel there's still enough room there where you could still have a picnic table or some chairs and still have a, a, a functional patio space. But I understand some people are gonna say, mm, man, I really feel like I've lost out here. You're really trading outside space for inside space on a model like this when you have those opposing slides on a shorter camper. Now down inside here, these are good things I like to look like previous owners hitching. Uh, a, a uh, An E2 system, which is combination weight distribution and anti-sway, which is very, very cool. The uh, RVQ grill for the bumper. You'll see a bumper bracket in just a minute there. Looks like maybe they were thinking about replacing a, uh, a valve at some point. The um, little clear view window things on your sewer related stuff. Maybe it's not necessarily the, the prettiest view, but they're actually super, super functional because you get a, you're no longer guessing, are my tanks empty? Is everything done going down the hose? and I suppose you can monitor your fiber intake simultaneously, but I don't believe that is actually their intended purchase or purpose. <laughs> Premiers come with those uh, sleek looking tinted frameless windows, although the slide side windows do tilt open for airflow. Slam latches, magnet catches, and this is on a, a Norco type chassis. This is uh, like a huck bolted aircraft style chassis. Real quick note at uh, the other side of the pass through, just another good look at all that aluminum there but this is a Z frame. It's a little bit lighter. I've noticed brands that ride on this chassis tend to have some pretty good service records. And you might've noticed that is enclosed. It is also heated with a 30,000 BTU furnace. Uh, black tank flush and uh, outside camp shower with hot and cold, which is great. Ooh, 
Ooh, I'm wondering if that's an aftermarket thing. I don't recall this coming from the factory that way. So, oh yeah. Oh, they did some running gear enhancements on this. I missed that my first, these are Goodyear Endurance radials and they are virtually new. It's 87 mile an hour rated tires right there. And that is not the factory uh, suspension link system right there. That is a Moride Wide Stance CRE 3000. They spent some coin upgrading the ride and handling on this camper. I missed that my first time through. I'm glad we spotted that. There, that's nice stuff. I mean, if you're, it, it's a nice wide model when you get to your destination, you've got lots of living space. But if you're looking for towing and going, the lightweight nature of this thing, the wide stance axles, man, especially the running gear and the tire upgrades. This, this is a mover and a shaker right here, folks. I do try to practice uh, great transparency though. So there is one thing I feel I really need to point out. It's not a defect, there's nothing wrong with the RV, but this does not have what we would commonly refer to as a walkable roof. Now it's not that there's no roof decking and it has the same roof skeletal structure as anything else. It's just that the roof decking itself is a little thinner than uh, most decking. It's what's called a service roof, but logically, if you're going to get up there and you're going to replace seals or something like that, you're probably going to be on your hands and knees anyway. I don't know about you. I, I don't know that I've ever found a way to effectively replace RV seals while standing straight up and down. So you just need to be on your hands and knees and you can feel the trusses that are about every 16 inches on center. They're, they're galvanized steel uh, roof rafters in this, which is very uncommon and very cool. They're very lightweight also, which is another area where they've saved a lot of weight on this RV. That is just one of those things I want you to be aware of when you get into this. I don't want you to buy this RV from us, then take it home to Ohio or wherever and go step around the roof to do your seasonal upkeep and bust something. I, I, I want to make sure that you're aware of that before you get into this. I, I want to take a moment to kind of just put a break on things. Uh, interesting note, today's bullets and passport travel trailers, they do have a walkable roof. That is one of the reasons they weigh a little bit more and cost a little bit more though. It's one of the reasons this thing is just incredibly lightweight. What do you think? That is, I mean, again, 5,500 pounds for all that goodness. That's a lot of trailer. My goodness. <laughs> uh, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think about it. And if you appreciate the way we go through these, hit that subscribe button, follow along with us. And we'd love to have you as we go through. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.